Well, Bill Blair is Canada's Minister of Border Security and Organized Crime Reduction. He joins me from the foyer of the House of Commons. Uh, Minister Blair, good to see you again. Thanks for being with me. Thank you, Peter. You've unveiled more, uh, more funding, $86 million, uh, to fight gang and gun violence in Canada, money for border services, uh, the RCMP, and on top of that, there's money for provinces as well. Uh, let's break it down if we can. $51.5 million for border services over five years. What precisely will that money be used for? Well, a number of very important initiatives. Uh, first of all, you know, we've, we've seen that the use of technology is very, very important in, in the border detection, um, particularly as it pertains to firearms, but also other things like opioids and synthetic drugs and other contraband material. And so we're making significant new investments in technology, X-ray technology and other detection uh, devices that will enable CBSA to be far more effective in, in screening both cars that cross the border, but also cargo as it comes across, because we know both of those are sources of, of illicit. Uh, firearms and other contraband material. Right. Uh, the, the CBSA has also found a very effective use of, of well-trained dogs for detection. And so we're increasing our capacity to, to, to have more dogs trained uh, to work at the border, and, and particularly it's at some of the high uh, traffic border points. We find that the, the use of those, those, those dogs is both effective in detecting and, and determining when contraband material is being smuggled across the border, but it can also be done in, in a way which is perhaps least intrusive to Canadians as they come and go. Okay. Across I mean, that border. In, in relative terms, uh, that you know, that that doesn't seem like a lot of money over five years to prevent firearms from crossing into Canada illegally. How, how bad's the problem now? Is the number of illegal firearms coming into this country rising or falling? Well, it, 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 we, we've been looking at, at the data and speaking to law enforcement across the country. Uh, it remains a significant source of, of guns, and there's, there's different estimates um, between 70 and 50 and 70 percent of the, of the guns that are being used for criminal offenses in Canada are being identified as being sourced as having been in, illegally imported into this country. So it remains a significant concern. Just yesterday, the Toronto Police Service uh, announced, in partnership with CBSA, the seizure of, of a number of very significant high-powered weapons that were destined for the criminal market, which were, were detected and intercepted by, by law enforcement. Um, it's, I think it's a great example of, of the third place we're making significant investments in, and that's the intelligence sharing and collaborative integrated approach that law all law enforcement, both federal, provincial and municipal, who are going to take across this country to respond more effectively. Okay. Uh, what about the $34.5 million? Uh, for the RCMP. How will that money make communities safer? Well, the, R the RCMP over a number of years have seen their capacity to conduct serious organized crime investigations, particularly at the border, diminished over time because as a result of staffing and funding cutbacks. So we've been working very hard to restore that capacity. And so we're making investments back into the RCMP to ensure that they have the ability and the personnel that they need to conduct investigations. You know, a goal line stance at the border is, is, is not as effective as a, a, a broader approach. Doing investigations into the organized crime groups that are responsible for uh, the importation of, of these firearms and the use of these firearms and, and sail into into the gangs in our communities and so we need to make sure that that law enforcement has the investigative capacity and access to the intelligence resources that they need to be more okay. effective I mean, I mean is this is, is this additional funding today is, is this an acknowledgement that whatever's in place now isn't working well, it's an acknowledgement that, that Canadians have a legitimate and serious concern about the level of gun violence. We've seen an increase in gun violence in, in this country over the past three or four years. It's unacceptable to Canadians. It's unacceptable to us. And we know we need, need to make significant new investments and, and to increase the, the capacity of law enforcement um, in, in, in personnel, but also in access to new technologies and intelligence gathering and sharing um, resources in order to be more effective in, in dealing with this issue. And, and, you know, we do not want to see the types of incidents that have been taking place in Canada, but also in other jurisdictions that, that are legitimately concerning to Canadians. And so we're taking the action as necessary. Right. There I mean, we, 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 as we speak, uh, they're, they're still trying to deal with another mass shooting uh, in California. Uh, Twelve people dead. This one, this one involving a handgun, uh, it, would, it would appear. How, how concerned are you that should, how concerned should we be in Canada that we, we could see that here? Well, you know, we're fortunate in this country. We have a fundamentally different culture with respect to firearms, but we can't afford to be complacent. And we have seen a number of incidents in Canada where, you know, handguns get in, handguns and, and other firearms get into the hands of people intent on committing criminal acts. You know, we have a problem with, with gangs in, in our country and gang violence, but we've also seen firearms used in other types of, of intimate partner violence and, and, and other types of crime. 
we are not complacent and we're going to do everything we can. We're looking at, at both investments in law enforcement and I'm also tasked with, with looking at additional regulatory approaches that will be effective in keeping firearms out of the hands of people who would commit crimes with them. Your government's focus uh, uh, seems to be a lot on trying to steer young people away from, from guns and gangs as well. Your critics uh, say perhaps too much so instead of really cracking down with tough penalties on gang offenders and, and gun crimes. Uh, how do you respond to that? You know, I, for, for almost a decade, I heard from those critics nothing but tough talk. They cut the funding for law enforcement. They made it easier for, for criminals to gain access to firearms by loosening up firearms laws and regulations. And Canadians need and expect more than just tough talk. They need smart action. And we're taking those actions and, and we're doing what is necessary to interdict the supply of firearms getting into the hands of criminals. But we're also making significant investments in communities to reduce the demand for those guns. You have to do both. And, and there is no one simple solution, but a thousand things we have to do well and we have to do right. And that's, that's why we, we're making money available to the provinces, territories and to municipalities so that we can have responses that are appropriate to the communities in which they're taking place to be right. effective in keeping those places safe. And, and, you know, we're doing what is necessary, Peter, and, and I think overwhelmingly Canadians support those investments and this initiative. You've been given the job of, of looking at whether there should be a ban on handguns in this country and, and a ban on assault weapons. Uh, I know the consultation process continues. You're hoping to be able to finish that before the end of the year and, and, and provide a report, I guess. Um, but you no longer talk about a possible ban on assault weapons. Instead, you talk about assault-style weapons after gun advocacy groups objected to that term being used. Are these assault weapons or not? And do you believe there's a place for them in Canada? Well, well I will tell you that, that w weapons that use high, velo high velocity ammunition, which can be devastating when, when, when it's used against a person, uh, weapons that have high capacity magazines are, are also, you know, the, the weapons that have been used in, in, uh, in, in many of these mass shootings that have taken place across North America, you know, we are looking at taking all the steps necessary to make sure that those weapons are not accessible to anyone who would commit a violent crime. And so our, our government is quite prepared to take whatever measure is effective in keeping those weapons and handguns out of the hands of criminals. But that doesn't sound like a, that doesn't sound like an outright ban on what are uh, what you what you call now assault style weapons. It, you're talking tougher controls, not a ban. Well, let, let, let me tell you, Peter, I'm quite prepared to look at any measure and all measures, uh, up to and including a ban on such weapons. But I think it's important that that we, we we look at the evidence, we look at the experience in other jurisdictions, speak to to the stakeholders, make sure that we make evidence-based decisions on what will actually be effective in keeping our communities safe. But I want to assure all Canadians, we are committed to doing what is necessary to keep these guns out of the hands of criminals and to keep our communities safe. And we are prepared to examine any measure that will be effective in keeping Canadians safe. Bill Blair, appreciate your time today. Uh, always good to talk to you, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Thank you, Peter.